and go with yeah. All right, welcome to the Recruiter Startup Podcast. I'm joined here by Adam Matthews of Discover International. This is the final of day one of our trip to Miami. Why don't you should move here? Cool. Okay, I'm ready to go. How are you today? Yeah, really good. The weather's not so good as you can see it normally. This is quite a rarity for Miami. But aside from that, all good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, loving, the, loving the city. Yeah. How yeah. long have you been here for? So I arrived almost exactly a year ago. Next week will be uh, my first year in Miami. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. And uh, your kids married? I'm married. I got married just before I came out. Here. All yeah. right. Yeah. Cool. And uh, okay, so what we normally do here? Yeah. Is we jump into how it all began for you. Okay. Walk, me, walk me into your, your, your background in recruitment before you set up first. Okay, cool. So I actually got into recruitment a bit later than most people. Yeah. So I got into recruitment when I was 28. 27 for me. Okay. So. Yeah, 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 so it's a little bit, uh, a little bit later than, than a lot of people. I uh, joined a company called uh, Hydrogen, I don't know if you know them. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And, they, and I've done sales before, so yeah. I've done some different types of sales once I've gone into recruitment. Um, and yeah, they were a good business back in the day. Um, the yeah, in my background now, I joined really. The reason I, I got into it, into recruitment, why I joined them is I really believed in the idea of being in a meritocratic environment. Yeah. In my early years at Hygiene, that definitely was the case. Um, my first year in recruitment, I was the top leader in the whole company. Yeah. So there was 350 people in the company, and I, I got to number one. In the first, year. first year, I got a 350. It was in 2008, so there was a financial crisis going on, so that helped me. Um, How did that help you? Because not so many other people doing the oh, work. Yeah. So, so in previous years, yeah. they might maybe the top of that comes to half a million. But okay. When I joined, because of the financial crisis, they maybe weren't doing as big numbers, and I did three fifty in my first year. How did you do that? I think because because I've done other sales, I was like I've been trained. I did four fifty in my first okay. year. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record. But, uh, but yeah, I think because I'd done I'd done like what I'd called like solution selling. So yeah. I've, I've been trained quite heavily on my spin selling solution selling. I just applied the selling method of knowledge I learned before into recruitment. Yeah. So I took to it pretty quick. And then year on year I was the top leader in the company and then I got promoted, became top form manager and yeah, took yeah. it from there. And, yeah. what about it? So what vertical was it that you were in? So that was oil and gas back then. Okay. Um, so I started that's another gas. that's another thing that probably you, you could add to because that was money for jam in that boom, wasn't it? It was, but in 2008, it wasn't, for, oil price was $45 yeah. you know, a barrel. So actually when I started, the oil price, but the, I remember when I started in 2008, the oil price, when I got there, was about $125. Six, well, six weeks, probably not quite six weeks, probably yeah. three months later, it was down to $45. Right. So it, it definitely got hit, but it didn't get hit as badly as some of the other markets in that time. It got hit a lot worse later. But in so you didn't contract with her? I didn't know. Yeah. And was it like geologists or drillers or? Yeah, that kind of thing. I was actually, when I joined the company, they hadn't done it before, they hadn't hired one other guy. I remember my first week, I had to do a presentation of what a geologist was. Yeah. I thought it was a test. I was actually doing the market research, they didn't know what it was. So it was like we just started the market, we'd never ever done it before. Yeah. So they, they brought, to be honest, when I got hired, my boss, who was very good, told me a couple of white lies, like making it, quite a lot. When I got there, there was no clients, no data, there was no candles. But literally, Every client I spoke to had to add to the system because they didn't exist, we'd never yeah. done it before. So, first couple of months, we were just working out what a good candle was, what a good client yeah. was, so that's, you know, that's how it started. Because it's tricky, right? Because in oil and gas, you've got your four major recruitment firms, okay. and yeah. they, they hold a lot of the major accounts. Yeah. Were you going after the mid-tier, the mid-tier uh, suppliers of them? Or? Well, we, the way I kind of got trained, but you know, I think well trained when I started, it was all very much niche, and that's where we did get into the geologists and subsurface stuff. Um, we just focused on those niches, mm -hmm. and in a relatively short period of time, back in the day, our brand name was Darwin Park. We did become the number one on subsurface in Europe, and that was my team. Yeah. Uh, so we were very, very good at that, and then we added on drilling in some other areas. Uh, and again, we then became the number one in, in drilling. Like we were like supplying to major companies, so Shell, we were the number one supplier to Shell. Mm -hmm. So we weren't just working with small outfits, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously we made a lot of money out some some mid size. So we used to do a lot of work with a company called Merce. We don't do it anymore. We used to do a lot of work with a company called Tullo uh, and a bunch of others. But yeah, we, you know, myself, I used to run. So I joined as a, um, a, a you know junior consultant. And I remember I did a training course with Hydrogen, and my now business partner I've got two, but one of them his name is Steve McBride. He was on the same training course, and he was hired to do contract finance. Okay. Um, and we were in different buildings, and after about six months, I've been putting up serious numbers very quickly. So he phoned me up and said, Adam, you know, how are you doing these numbers? Do you think there's a contract market? And I was brand new to recruitment. I was like, 
I imagine so. He managed to get a transfer, which was quite difficult. Yeah. And then Piggy didn't have the back of my clients. <laughs> and basically, he got out of contract. I grew up per, so I didn't end up running the firm team. He ran the contract team. Um, for really, they had one other guy. At the point that I left, I was overseeing the, the Perm European business. My, my business partner was overseeing contract. It was the, the most prominent and most profitable business area of the company. Yeah, and we do lots of business in the North Sea and stuff like that. So we, we did, yeah, we did plenty of work in, in the UK and, and Aberdeen. We did a lot of work in Norway. Mm. Uh, we actually did a lot of work in Denmark. There was only a couple of oil and gas firms there. We did a lot of work there. We still did quite a lot of work in the Netherlands. Um, we did bits in Africa, but yeah. in Europe, and we, you know, we did some stuff in some quite, you know, random places for them. We were really big in Switzerland. There's a particular client there we used to make a lot of money yeah. off. A little bit in Spain. Um, and then we did then start taking that to the USA, and then um, the business then opened up nights in Asia, and Steve actually went out to Australia to open up all the gas from there. So we ended up taking it around the world, but the first the first couple of years was all Europe. Did, like, did you get an international or did you stay in the UK? I, I did go internationally, but before we set up Discover, mm. I, decide, I decided I wanted to get a bit more life experience and a bit more recruitment experience, so mm. I went to work for another firm. And I went out to Singapore and spent a year in Singapore. Okay, which um, one? So I worked for a firm called Earthstream. Okay, and was out in Singapore, still, still doing energy. So I went and set up um, their sort of oil and gas team out there for them. And I was helping them set up uh, their team in the US from the Singapore and their team in the UK at the yeah. time. Actually, I had some restrictive what, what year was that? That was, oh, when was that? So we set up Discover about five and a half years ago. So probably about six years ago that I, mm. I was out in Singapore. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, there's an interesting question I have in my head. And yeah. It's really that you were doing for and he was doing him. Mm. Yeah. At what stage did you start whispering to each other? Which you take this first advice? It's an interesting question, that. So, I think, um, and it's part of some of the principles that we base our business on. Yeah. So, when we first started at Hydrogen, I don't want to slide you too much because I actually had it brilliant journey with them in the early days. In, in the early days, it was very much a meritocratic environment. Mm. We, what we put in, we also got out. We got great development, you know. Uh, we created a brilliant business for them, but also they accelerate, you know, very quickly. In, within three years of doing recruitment, like running really sizable teams, running really big PL. They were exiting at that stage, were they? No, they, they weren't, but what, what the transition was, after about three years, it, some of the leadership changed, yeah. and it became pretty apparent. Whereas for years, it had been a pretty mutual, we were adding a lot of value, yeah. and we were getting a lot of value, that started to change. It became pretty apparent we were never going to get shares in the business or get to the top table. Yeah. Actually, we were making fortunes for the company, and we were no longer, it, it, and I think actually, they maybe Hydrogen didn't quite realize how good they had it. I think they thought that oil and gas market was very straightforward. I mean, it was a good market, but yeah. we were doing some really good things. So at that point, when we kind of took the view, you know, we were no longer getting quite as much as we were putting in, yeah. we then did start talking. We felt we could do it bigger and better. Mm. Um, and I guess they got to a point where we maybe didn't want to quite share the ideas we were having because we knew we weren't going to get remunerated or rewarded properly yeah. for that. And I think when that started to click, I think that's when I realised, well, if I'm not, if I don't want to share all my good ideas with my employer, then probably this isn't the yeah. place I want to come and be. So it was around about that point we started talking about maybe setting up. Was one of you more logic than the other? No, I, I just think we we work very well together, and I, you know I can't looking back it was a while ago now. I think yeah. we're both we're both of a similar mindset. We both felt we could go and do it. Um, yeah, and that's this is this is every re, every recruiter that mm. do well at a decent company is in a bar talking to the other guy going. We should probably we should probably do go out and at some stage. I think so. Yeah, but I also think if if we unless you're tied into yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. And this is this, so that's what I think if we'd been if we'd known we'd get proper shares in that business, mm. we would have stayed. And I actually again talking about companies and quite a lot of good companies that have come out of hydrogen, I think partly the way they're structured makes it hard for them to give out equity. Mm. Um, part of the philosophy behind this company, because of what we experienced there, is how amazing it was for the meritocracy for a period. Mm. We want that to be part of our business forever and we want everyone that Forms that get in a position that myself and Steve are in. And I've got a third business partner, Terry, who's in a similar boat, but he was doing pharma, not, not oil and gas. Um, we want to be in a position where we can offer that so people can make fortunes from the company if they deserve it, yeah. so they don't want to leave. Um, so, you know, and if someone you know, did a project on day where they want to set up, we 
we shouldn't invest in other people. We'd like to be in a place where people want to stay with us yeah. because they will get that reward that unfortunately wasn't an offer with hydrogen. And I think you know, I think it's to do with the way their business structure. They could be a much bigger company now if they manage to retain. Yeah, I always, I always people. think S3 are the same. You know, they could have seen people that have set yeah. up businesses because what they didn't invest in them. Yeah, yeah. So it got to a point where we felt we could do what we were doing. Better really. So yeah, and we, were, and we were ready for the challenge. We wanted to create something that we were proud of. So yeah. and that oil and gas market was going to last forever. So you thought you had a crack at it, right? Absolutely. We, what we, happened? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> so so that's yeah, that's a good story. So when we launched the company, the launch, the launch of the company was, was really good. So myself, I've got two business partners, myself, Steve and, and Terry. We went and set up in a room, three of us. I hadn't been on the phone for about three years at this point, mm. so I was a little bit rusty. Um, and we went and set up and. Start making cool stuff. Start wrecking. Um, and you know, I remember the first day doing it. I was getting back on back on the phones. It took I was a little bit rusty. It took me a couple of days to, to get into it. But very quickly, we, you know, our business plan we execute to perfection and beyond. So we had um, we managed to hire loads of our old team. Yeah. So basically, I mean, I'm sure I'm very sad we decimated the old company because we took loads of our old people. Um, and they joined us very quickly as soon as we started making money. And I remember there was quite a lot of chat because people would join us. They were convinced we must have taken funding for us to be able to hire all these people. But that wasn't the case. It was myself and my business partners were absolutely naming it, bringing loads of fees, and we could just keep hiring. Yeah. So within um, 18 months, we got up to uh, 18 people. And we had offers out to have five other people join us. All ready to join us. We're about to get to 23 people inside 18 months, all of our own money. What year is this? This was... 2014. 2014, yeah. And I remember we just took a bigger office. We were about to open in Houston. We were absolutely going all gun blazing. We were about to open in Houston. We just taking a bigger office in prime real estate and monument in London. And then the bottom fell out of the oil and gas market in a way that, uh, yeah, so. It wasn't, it wasn't much fun. I was in Calgary. Okay, yeah. It so you've you, you yeah. seen it. Yeah, so, so yeah, we had, a, we had, after an amazing start, and you know, we made a few, learned a few business lessons from it. I didn't make any, you know, numbers made any money in those early days. It was all the money we kept putting back in the company to hire. So we hired some amazing people, and we really appreciate those people. You know, they all came and joined us, and they, you know, part of that journey. So, so that was really good. But suddenly, the bottom fell out of the market, and I have to say, the next year and a half was incredibly stressful. Yeah. Because, you know, when I said the bottom fell out, for people that haven't done it, like, literally, there was not any jobs. No, it just turned up. Yeah. Uh, literally, yeah. yeah. People that we used to call. Calgary, I, I was there to launch an IT division yeah. for a company. Yeah. Just turned up. Yeah. And I was like, they, uh, yeah. There was pe people, you know, who, that were geologists that were on, you know, hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, who suddenly happened to become bus drivers or lorry drivers or school teachers because literally they can do anything else. Yeah. So that that was an incredibly difficult time. I'm quite proud of good, how good lessons. Yeah, it's yeah. a very good lesson there. It's interesting, you know. Uh, and I could go on about this for ages about advice we got about how we should set up and how you should be an expert and a specialist in one thing yeah. and be famous for it. And that's why we, we did it. But fortunately, we did have a contingency plan because one of my business partners, uh, who's Terry Lee, he'd done pharmaceuticals before, he'd done pharma. Yeah, people are always going to need drugs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so we could quite quickly pivot and into a different market, which we, we managed to do. Like instantly? Did, did he, no, so it's again, a couple of things that came with that. I think we. It, we did pivot pretty quick, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, again, I think Steve took a bit of a lead on, on making sure that we moved pretty quickly. But I don't think we realised how we, we knew one gas was in trouble. We didn't realise that it was going to so last that long. Yeah, so we carried on chipping away at oil and gas because last last year it, it, it hasn't worked. Well, yes, it's only recovered now. But like it was, yeah, but it was really bad. So yeah. so we sort of moved half the business into farm and carry on with energy yeah. for. Charles is working for NES and they cut a third of their staff globally. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just like overnight. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not surprised yet. Yeah. And we moved to Guatemala instead of Director. <laughs> okay. <That's laughs> right. yeah. So what? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so so yeah. So we we went through through that and we, we you know get a business lesson. Maybe we you know in hindsight we should have shut down the energy totally and just moved straight to farm because that market is amazing. Yeah. Which we'll probably come on to. But um, we kind of you know. We still make some, uh, we were quite fortunate because again, you know, to, to be truthful, we had to fight to keep the lights on. Again, me and my business partner didn't take a salary for a period. I was quite fortunate I managed to win a couple of key clients that were still hiring in yeah. that session. Who, to be honest, if we hadn't won those, maybe not, I mean, we would have found another way, I'm sure. But if I hadn't won those particular clients, 
maybe wouldn't be able to keep the lights yeah. on. There's one particular client, I won't mention them, but they basically paid our bills for about wow. six months and they, we made some serious fees out of that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of gratitude to that particular firm, they don't know it. Uh, but yeah, they helped us pay the bills for a while while we start to re-establish ourselves in the farm. So, so you re-established the farm now. I'm, yeah. I'm sure you lost some of those pillars. Yeah, we did. I mean, it was a funny time actually, that because we got people that were in our old team, and I think when I look back on that particular period, we had a lot of experience oil and gas builders, and now they couldn't make any money. Mm. It was a really interesting time because they felt such loyalty to us because they'd come and joined us, and they didn't want to leave us in the lurch. Mm. And we felt such loyalty to them, we didn't want to let them go because um, we didn't want to let them down. Yeah. And we ended up in a weird situation where you know, they weren't able to make any money because they, they were struggling. To would you, the would you pivot them faster? We would have pivoted faster, and to be honest, I think probably we should have let a couple people go that went before me, and I also think probably a couple of them should have resigned. Yeah. They didn't want to resign <laughs> because they didn't want to let us down. So, you know, it, it, that again was, was an interesting thing. We showed a lot of loyalty to them because we, you know, we really appreciate what they, yeah. they've done, and they showed a lot of loyalty to us. But actually, the ones that didn't want to do farm, it would be better if, yeah. you know, we'd, we'd, you know, you learn a lesson from that, they well, would be better off. When you first moved the fire, man, yeah. what type of stuff did you have to change from being a value gas recruiter? Well, there was a few things we had to do, so we had to move to much cheaper and smaller offices to begin with, mm. so that was pretty, you know, I remember we spent, we had always been, we spent a particular six months in a pretty, we were in lovely offices now, we spent six months in a pretty horrible office. Yes. Where are you based now? Uh, so in London we're back very close to money, we're actually right on the Thames, so we overlooked directly at the shell, I've got a balcony with a nice view of uh, Tower Bridge, it's a really nice location. But for a period we'd gone to Blackfriars and we were in a horrible little office in Blackfriars with like no windows. Like, we, we, we called it the, I remember HMV were in the same building, we called it like the office where companies go to die. So we got out of that, that, that office as soon as we could, but it's, you know, for a period it's what we, you know, what we could, what we could do. Uh, but yeah, and then, so we're there, we've also we've got an office in Warsaw, in, uh, sorry, Krakow. Yeah, in Poland now, and obviously we're, we're here in Miami. Bridge. Interesting. Yeah. So, and yeah. Just to jump into that, what you're doing in Warsaw? Krakow, sorry. Krakow. Yeah, yeah. Krakow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do they do a lot of legwork, a lot of the lot, lot of source and a lot of research? Um, we just launched that office, yeah. and we just made our first hires. So the plan is, so, so yeah, they'll be doing some uh, of the resource. Uh, particularly with some big project work, yeah. so that's part, you know, offshore delivery centre sure, yeah. uh, is, is a big part of what that's we're what, doing. That's what we have as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, they'll be doing some of the resourcing, some of the big project work. But we also, you know, there's some good recruiters in uh, Krakow, and we also feel like maybe there's, we want to give them a bit more opportunity than maybe they're getting in um, some of the other firms, some yeah. of the outsourcing, you know, you've got some big players out there, I think people like Ranks that are outsourcing out there. So for the good ones, we want to give them opportunities to do 360, and we want to pay them more than they get paid locally. Mm. Um, so definitely never doing some of the resourcing for us, but we're hoping people will hire, they will get more of a kick out of their careers mm. than they're getting in the in the other companies that are doing the big volume outsourcing there. So yeah. it'll be a bit of a hybrid. Sorry, I just yeah. digress there. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was, yeah. I was keen yeah. to get into those details. Yeah, yeah. So you get uh, you, you get established again, you kind of get up on, on your feet in the, yeah. in the farming world. When did the USA start getting on your radar that, do you know what? Maybe yeah, I could move out there and launch an office. Okay, yeah, so that's a good, good question. So we, we were originally going to go to the USA when we were doing oil and gas, so we were going to open up in Houston, and then obviously we had to, we actually identified the guy to leave the office, and we had to can them and I did it because of what happened. So always the US, I, I, I've recruited in the US before, I spent time out here, I've been over there, I remember being in Houston, the oil and gas stays, and it was just bigger and better, and the market was enormous. So we always thought we wanted to get in the US. Mm. Now, I remember a few years back, I was doing a, uh, a board meeting with my partners, and because of what happened in oil gas, our business plan, where we wanted to be at, we were a couple of years behind it, yeah. because, and we wanted to accelerate it. So we had a meeting, it was like, okay, Just the three of these, or do you have an NED in there as well? It was, it was, it was the three of us. We, we don't have an NED at, at, at this point, although we have a very good network of other, you know, equipment business owners, you know, there's a few people that I really respect in the business, the guys who work for us should be one of them who we take advice from, but at this point it was the three of us. And we were like, right, we've got to get, we need, we've got to set some giant things forward to get back to the business plan, back mm -hmm. to where we wanted to be. And it was like, okay, we've got to go to America. You know, that is where it's biggest and best. So even before we even really got farm going in Europe, mm -hmm. we'd already decided we want to get to America as fast as we can because we know how big the market is out here. So I remember we were sat down, three of us, it was like, okay, so who's going to do it then? And it wasn't like all three of us were jumping at the bit to go to America. We were, you know, I was, I recently. Uh, the short straws. Yeah, well, no, I wouldn't say that. I recently got, got engaged. 
Um, one of the guys recently had a child, another guy had some other commitments, um, and it was kind of, well, we've got to go, and I was like, go on, then I'll do it. And it wasn't because I was desperate to do it, it's because I thought, I'd lived overseas before, and I, and I, I like travelling. But as, so I wasn't doing it under duress, but I wasn't jumping from down. It is the best decision I ever made. Yeah. I'm absolutely delighted that it was me that put my hand up and said I was doing it. Yeah. Um, Walk me through the complexities of life in your So, there's quite a lot of detail around, obviously you've got to find your identified yourself and your leaders that you're going to take. So there was some strategy around that, yeah. because I've set up. Well, you do business already from the UK? We start, so that's part of the strategy. Yeah. We, we, I set up several markets now, and I didn't want to do it again on my own. I set up several offices for different businesses. I really wanted to take some of the key guys I've got in the, in the business. So, so there was a few things. I need to think about the strategy I was going to take with me, and then of course you have to put your, get your visa, mm. um, and that takes it's, you know it's a process, but it's quite a detailed process. So the strategy was that we would uh, also I remember my fiance at the time she'd be very supportive, but she didn't want to go out to America until we were married. So, so I kind of had a bit of lead time. I had, a, I had like nine, yeah, I had like nine months to a year where I knew I was going, but I couldn't go until that point. Yeah, yeah. So we spent that year hiring people that wanted to move to America. So we hired some like young guys in uh, in the UK that wanted to make that move but didn't have that opportunity because they were quite junior and maybe couldn't get the visa. But they, mm. spent, they spent six months to a year with us where they got enough experience to get the visa. Um, and uh, one of the key other key people we've got here, he was like my, my number two in uh, in. In London, mm. yes, yeah, so we planned to get them out, and we got them all the visas, so that went really well. So we planned to get our visa here. A big part of it was choosing the location, yeah. so we shortlisted a bunch of locations, uh, and we prompted for Miami, which some people find a bit unusual, but it was method in the madness. Yeah. So I can, yeah, I can explain to people. Uh, but yeah, yeah. And the capital investment to get the visa. What would you advise on how much that what to actually get our to, to, to get your ET two status? Yeah, you know. I mean, again, you hear. I hear lots of different things from yeah. 30 to 150. Okay, well, I only had about 15, so uh, we did it. Uh, yeah, but let's, let's move to America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but the, we were making money in yeah. America. Because we, we, we had a lead time, we were already doing money in America. So sure. when, I, I mean, I would have put up more. We had we more money in the bank now because we've done it. Mm. Uh, but the, um, we, we were making money with serious, com- we were making serious money. We were, I mean, we made about $1.2 million in the, in the, uh, through the year. Yeah, so we were able to show, we made $1.2 million and surely you want us to pay tax on that in America rather than in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so again, uh, we put up some cash, we could have put up more, and our business plan showed that we were going to hire Americans, which obviously we have done since we've arrived. And put that business in the business plan as part of yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a certain requirement? Yeah, you've got to put, there's a, you know, so it, was, it was two years ago I started working on it now, but yeah, there's a, there's a load of different documents you've got put together around strategy and structure, but yeah. a big part of ours was explaining our current client base and how we're going to grow that and then how we're going to create jobs in America. A, a huge part of that E2 investment is that you show that you're going to create jobs mm. uh, for Americans, which we absolutely are doing ahead of uh, the plan we provided to the embassy. So we're well on track and we're going to keep beating that. So, so yeah, that's, that's a key part of it. There's a few different... different well, why may I? Yeah, so that, that was interesting, uh, how that came about. Um, and it's a little bit different. There's a, there's a few reasons, I guess, we, we, we thought about it. Nearly every company that does what we do in pharma, when they come to America, they go to New York. Yeah. Yeah. Some go to California. Some go to Boston. Some go to Boston, yeah, absolutely. We, we felt, again, when we started doing the plan, we were, we were a smaller player in pharma. We're not anymore. We've now got a really big brand. Particularly mm-hmm. some of the niches we're in, we're doing extremely well. I mean, there's some niches we're in in the US, which I'm already very confident with the number one of what we're doing. We're going to be in the year. Um, so, uh, but at the time, we were quite a small brand. And I felt, we go to New York, we're not doing anything different, we're not doing anything special. Mm-hmm. We're just another company in New York who, you know, people are hearing about all the time, probably just competing on base salary lane. I felt if we could go to another location, which maybe could offer something different, could yeah. offer a USP, would make us stand out and make us a little bit different. What is that USP? Okay, so we looked at a bunch yeah, of others. Yeah, yeah, we looked at a bunch of others before we settled on Miami. Yeah. Uh, but um, so I could go through yeah, this yeah, and make a process. Yeah, but, so, so we looked at California. Uh, so there's a few things. One, and we looked at Boston. We looked at Atlanta. We looked at Texas. I sell the California dream. Okay. Yeah, I, sell well, I, don't, I don't want to sell against it too much. Yeah. Though, but, no, 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 do. But, but the, obviously, so so most people get into recruitment are normally kind of young, fun in their mid twenties. Okay, so 
Miami is known for having a nightlife, it definitely has a fun environment. But what I'm going to clear off is much more than that. There's a stereotype that people assume is just like uh, Miami, it's like Instagram models and it's hacky and it's just a party. That definitely exists, but there's much more to it. I've established mm -hmm. since, since I've been in it. But we thought we wanted to go somewhere that was, that was fun. We also, um, and you know, New York's fun, LA's fun. We wanted to pick a city that was fun and was recognisable in the UK so people want to join us. Um, we thought we'd go somewhere hot because London's pretty cold. Boston, we seriously thought about Boston, but um, cool. we just, it's yeah, expensive. cold, it's expensive. There's so many employment opportunities there. We, we felt, again, we really often something unique if we go to Boston. Mm. And we also, you know, we were making really good money in London in America. So we we have come to the conclusion we don't have to be in the location where our clients are. We have to be on the same time zone. And we yeah. have to meet them easily. We don't have to be there. Yeah. So, um, and we look, as I say, we looked at California. The reason why we ended up coming from Miami, one is the tax. There is no state or city tax here. If you go tax for you and for the employees. yeah for the employees. So if you go to California, mm -hmm. you'll be paying federal tax, which is about twenty five percent. You'll be in takes paying take state tax, which is about 14%. Mm -hmm. So you'll be paying about 39%. Similar to UK? Similar to UK, yeah. You go to New York, you're paying state and city tax. Mm -hmm. I think with both combined, you're probably paying a bit over 40%. Yeah. In Miami, you will never pay any state tax. The maximum tax you'll ever pay is 25%. It's scaled, so you never get to 25%. The maximum tax you'll ever pay on commission is 22%. Mm -hmm. So already people are making 25% more roughly with us, 20% yeah. more maybe than they would in other locations. They're making loads more than they would in London. Also, the cost of living here is is much lower than California and much lower than New York. Now, compared to some other... New York is higher than California. Yeah. Uh, San Fran might be a bit higher, but New York yeah. definitely higher than, than, than LA. The, um, now, again, this Miami compared to Atlanta is expensive, or compared to Charlotte. Compared to New York, compared to LA, it's much cheaper. It's a lot cooler than Atlanta. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot more, there's a lot more going on. And, and the... Um, so, all, all the guys that came out from the UK, mm. they all live in walking distance from the office. They all live walk. So you can look at them when they enter the skyscrapers. Um, one of them lives, a couple of them live beyond the building just there, and a couple of them live in the other direction. I live in that building just there, actually. I live very close. Uh, but the, um, yeah, the, they can all walk to work, but what you get for your money here, so all of them have got swimming pools. All of them have got living condos. Yeah. They've all got balconies. Yeah. You know, they've got rooftop swimming pools. Ryan, who works for us, he actually, his swimming pool, his building, is the largest residential pool complex in North America. It's, it's like you go to like being a, like a day club. That's good. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the quality of what, all the, and, and you know, so they'll be paying less than they paid in London uh, rent, and they'll have a lot. I mean, if you pay what they're paying, you have a shoebox or a bed set in New York. But what you get for your money here is off the chart. Food. When I was a recruiter in Perth, in yeah. Western Australia, we used to feel sorry for people in London. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 I yeah, couldn't even imagine what it would be like to yeah, have yeah. to do that. Yeah, for sure. So, 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 yeah, quality of life is, again, so when we're in the office, we're, we're a proper recruiting company. We're trying to invest what we do. Yeah. So we're as intense in the office as we would be in any other I feel a bit yeah. underdressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're not too smart. We do casual Fridays. But, but, on, um, but the moment you step out of the office, it's like chilled. It's so much, you know, it's so much more, you know, I, I love London. It's a brilliant city. I, I, I'm sure I'll be there again one day, but you know, it's so busy and the commute is so stressful, and obviously it's cold. Uh, it, you know, New York's a cool city, but again, it's so busy, there's people everywhere. Here, you step out of the office and you've got palm trees, yeah. there's still loads going on, but it's just, it's. I, I go to the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At, at the end of the day, when I get finished with my meetings, I'm yeah. so happy to be on, on the train to West Sussex. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's 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 an intense place. Yeah, it's, New York has been like that as well. Yeah, it? yeah, it can, it can be. I'm not spent time early, so I can't can't compare it so much. What about families? Okay, like if you have kids and a wife, and you want to move to Miami, like can you have a house outside the city and drive in? Is it is is, is that is that available? Is like is in, in LA, it's tough because the traffic's terrible. It, it, I was pricing it because I was real fast yeah, yeah, sizing about yeah. the I mean, you can make here with the family for sure. Yeah, we're looking at five grand for yeah. an accommodation a month. Okay, okay. wow. Well, okay. For a family place. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, there's definitely a lot of that here. I, I'm, I've got a wife, I haven't got kids. So, You're um, still living the dream. Yeah, so one of, one of the guys on the team's got, um, got a three year old. And he, one of the things that's, diff that's good here is the, is the, the, the childcare 
is so much cheaper than in London. Like he waxes it up like it's dirt cheap. I don't know what he pays to get someone's kid. Yeah, we're we're getting getting far too yeah. But he told he said it's really really good value. So he, in London they could have childcare, but not here they do. Yeah. And his wife's quite fortunate because she doesn't work either. But you know, he gets to spend a bit of lady pleasure. But uh, but yeah, it's um, you can have to that yeah, 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 sounds nice. You, you, yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, my wife absolutely loves it. Yeah. I was. I was Nervous moving out here because I was told you know you've got to make sure your spouse really settles. Sure. She she loves living here. Um, I think you can have a mix. You know we've got uh, the team. You know again most of the people we took out in the UK are young in their twenties. Mm. They're having a great time living the single life, and you know they they enjoy being able to go to the beach and it being relaxing. But also there's a, there is a party scene here, so if you want to go and have a great time, mm. the area with the brickle, you know they have happy hours all the time. There's loads of cool bars around here. Like, yeah. it's, it's packed every night, so there's lots to do socially. There's, you know, if you're into sport, you know, they, again, the guys on the team are doing sport regularly yeah. um, in the evenings, whether that be, you know, just have the gym, but they're all playing soccer or they're doing, doing or, or football. I still try and call it football, but yeah, yeah. You, you get used to the big day here. So, but I think, yeah, if you're a family you want, and you want to do it, you definitely can. One of the, uh, I think, the team, um, well, a couple, some of the Americans, they live a little bit further out and they're driving in. Yeah. Um, so, again, if you live a bit further out, then property's much cheaper yeah. elsewhere. And you just couldn't do that in LA. Like, you couldn't live further. Really? Yeah. yeah we were trying to, okay. it's, it's a sick, it's a young, single person city. Okay, yeah. It, that's what we find in the yeah. end. So. Yeah, so you can, you could definitely, uh, I think, again, this is, it's a young, single person city, it's great fun, but you, the traffic, you can definitely live in LA. People drive in. Yeah. Again, all the expats we've taken out, they all live within walking distance of the office. Because I think mm-hmm. the lifestyle is, is one of the big reasons they make the move. Whereas some of the people that we hire locally, they you know, may drive up to 45 minutes to get here. Let me ask you some uh, questions about the numbers. Um, what's the average fee? Uh, average fee is $36,000. Uh, okay. Um, if a, What's your average yearly take from a recruiter that's made it? The average yearly that's made it? Okay, so we're relatively new in the US, so it's hard to say what average is because we're doing it. Yeah. Okay, but I've got, the guy that's been with us the longest at start, the longest, he'll, he's a recruit, recruit so he'll probably do about $110,000, $120,000 this year. Yeah. Um, he's very good. I would expect my other higher performers to do about, in terms of that's what they'll take, home, yeah. what they'll, oh, that's, what they'll that's, take that's what he'll make. Yeah, he'll make $120,000 this year. And uh, I've got a couple of guys that should make between 150 and 180, depending on when they finish up at the end of the year. Yeah. Um, but they, you can, they've only been doing it once you've been doing it a couple of years, I mean, so we've got several people in the team that are doing over half a million dollars a year. It's their first year in America and they're doing over half a million dollars. If I don't have a million dollar bill the next year, I'll be amazed. Like some of those, some of those people, once they've got a year or two under the belt, they'll be doing a million dollars. What would that person be doing in the UK? Or what were they doing Ster- in the UK? Sterling, I'd say Sterling, they're probably going to be doing 250. Like, so I'm talking about good people, 220 to 250. And farmers still a great market in the UK. Yeah. Uh, but the fees are bigger here. And the volume's more here, so you can make more. It's, it, you, you can, yeah, you can do well here, yeah, for sure. <laughs> what type of profiles are you at? Um, so, I'm relatively, I'm, because I got into recruitment a bit later, mm. I'm probably more open to uh, different profiles than some other people that kind of like, it's always got to be someone that's 21 and like, being you know, done it because I got into it later. But, I, but at the same time, we're a young fund company, so I want to balance. Do you sure. know, we want, so I'm quite open on to the type of profile of person. Obviously, you're coming from the UK, you've got to have some experience with your because you need that for yeah. Do you need them to be farmer specific? No, not necessarily. I'll switch, I think we'll switch markets. Which, um, which markets would you, would you consider switching? So if people can be funny, but different. Yeah, I, so I don't mind what market they come from. What's more important is the dynamic of the market. So. We, we work in, and you know, most markets are like this, it's highly candidate scarce, it's all headhunting. You know, if we put a job out out, no one any, that's, yeah. that's yeah. ever going to apply. So, so I want someone from a market that is used to headhunting and used to work in the candidate scarce markets and business developing in that market, yeah. which is all about going, yeah. to, going to clients and getting. I mean, it's one of the reasons actually that although I did a lot of gas before, I worked in candidate scarce markets. It wasn't hard switching to pharma because I just employed the same methodology, mm-hmm. I just need to learn some technical stuff. But how, I head, how we headhunt them, how we approach them, how we approach the market is exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really mind, you know, if someone's done pharma, brilliant, but they don't have to have done that. Yeah. If they if they worked in candidate scarce markets and they don't have to do recruitment, and they, there's a few things I guess that I look for in terms of personality. So I want them to be fun, I want them to be a team player because 
you know, some of them would set people up to go a bit head to head and be mm. competitive to the detriment of one another. We want people to be competitive, we want to be the best, mm. but we want people that, um, that don't want to do that to the detriment of their colleagues and we want that team. We've got great culture, you know, all people team get on, they do lots of social stuff together. I think that's a great thing actually, people that might come up in the UK. Mm. You know, the team will hang out together at the weekends, uh, you know, not just the, the Brits only, the Brits and the Americans will hang out, they go and do social stuff. So there is a network they can immediately tap into. They're not going yeah. to turn up and not have any friends. You know, they, we've got a really welcoming culture in that regard. So I want people to team play so we keep that going. And I want people that genuinely want to be the best and genuinely want to kick on with their career. We want to be the best at what we do in, in the niches we're in. So I need people that really want to make money, really want to be the best at what they do. And hopefully we're going to progress their careers. Because the whole reason we've come here is to scale and take the business somewhere and really make it worth something. So I think something that we can offer compared to some others it's, there's some bigger companies out there that have our private equity investment, mm. and they're all just about, they're not necessarily about developing people's careers, they're just about adding heads and hitting their next number so that they can hit their PE number and get some more money and their top people can take money off the table. We're privately owned, we want to take this company. We're, we're, you know, we got here, I got here in November, we officially launched in January, we're up to 13 people, 13 crews. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And we, and, but we've got, we're, we're, you know, pharma uh, is a huge, huge market. We're doing a tiny percentage of it. Mm. So I need to hire people that want to come and build, and hopefully people that want to come and lead and scale areas yeah. and, and run business areas. And like I said earlier, it's a meritocracy. We want people that want to stay and be part of the business, who when they build an area, they can get a part of that business, and they can become a shareholder in that business. We've got people in the company now yeah. that have that, and we want to, we, you know, we want to keep doing that so that people feel like they can keep growing yeah. us. So, what I'm looking for, I don't really mind what I've done previously in recruitment. Candidates guess would be good, but if they're, if they're good at what they do, they want to be the best and they want to take their career, they want to earn good money and build areas and you know achieve, they want to open up other offices, they can do that for us. And to, to get the visa? Okay. Uh, degree, copy of experience? Yeah, I mean, I've, 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 you hear lots of, a lot of different things people that have got out here without a degree. I think That's quite a lot of yeah, 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 yeah. You usually have about four years. Yeah, absolutely. So I think you might need a few more years experience to get that. But if you've got a degree and you've got approaching two years of experience mm. um, and you're good, I'm interested. Yeah. Um, if you've got a bit more great, but you know, um, some some of my best people, um, as I say, they joined us with 18 months in the industry. They spent six months with us in the UK and then came out here. Because you normally need. You, I've heard people getting visas on 18 months, but that's a little bit rarer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's only 18 months of a degree. Okay, wow. Okay, yeah. that's pretty good. So, the lawyer is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always been the lawyer. My lawyer's pretty good as well. The, ca the case they make yeah. to, like, it could be dressing up their previous experience. Yeah. So, yeah. like, let's say they're doing financial services recruitment. Yeah. And they've worked in a bank before. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the, the lawyer can kind of make that yeah, work, that's, you know? That's, um, that's it, yeah. If we can prove, I mean, I think that. Because we're, we're obviously part I'm trying, of our... I'm trying to explain this to recruiters, they're like, oh, I'm not alive and I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It's one of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we, obviously, part of the investment visa is we, we've got to hire Americans as well. Yeah. We're, hiring, we're hiring a volume of Americans. So I think one of the things they look at when the, the case is made is, is there a good proportion of US citizens? Yeah. And we have that. So we, we can definitely get more e We can definitely get more investment visas for, for people that want to come. Um, so, but obviously people are interested, so they've got to be good as well. I've had, sure. a, few, I've had a few applicants that are a bit average, and if you're going to invest in them and get them a visa, they've got to be pretty yeah. proper for you to want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's us, Al. Oh, all right, good awesome. man. Thanks very much.